I just imagined the world was on fire. Hey guys, my name is Kyoko and welcome to my sort of tipsy fashion channel. I don't know about you guys, but my 2020 news resolution on top of exercising more often am I right, is doing better by the planet. I feel like there's a little bit of an issue being in love with fashion. Human labor, harmful materials, killing animals, to name a few. So tip number one. Online versus in-store. I know the world seems like such a freaking lovely place when you can go buy clothes online in this never-ending web with your billions of freaking bargain promo codes. But the matter of the fact is, the number one contribu contributor, I swear I have a point, I'm not just babbling, to global warming, me, babble, pff, no, cat farts. But more so, airplanes and cars burning fuel and sometimes across the world just to get to you. And one more other thing, if you buy online, it always comes in like, what, like 10 pieces of like plastic? Like why is that even necessary? I hate you. So save fuel, go buy things in store, or you can buy things online and pick them up in store on your freaking cute bicycle and really save the planet. But the number one thing to keep in mind with all this is don't burn yourself out too quickly. It's kind of ironic, burning. Not to get too overwhelmed with all this information, just be conscious of it when you're making decisions and when you're going out to buy clothes because there are you know, other ways to help the planet that are just very simple little things. Something else to also keep in mind, lots of stores um, sell clothes that come in really freaking cute bags, like this one. While it is paper, and that's amazing, earth-friendly, bag. If they suck, it'll come in really crappy plastic bags. Shame on you, sucks and fish. Even using bags like these and filling it up with like one little piece of like lipstick and selling maybe like, what, 50 of them a day. It's still not good for the environment because only 9% of stuff actually gets recycled because there's issues with it. And I think it's better just to not create garbage in the first place. The good news is it gives you an excuse to buy a brand new canvas bag with a cute little face on it. Use that to just literally put your stuff in like they do at grocery stores and it'll look cute and you won't have piles and piles of these little things sitting in your recycling bin. Also, one other thing, why is it that every single store comes with like freaking massive receipts? Like, is that necessary? Oh, I have another really good one. You guys are gonna laugh. CVS, like let's, let's, let's do this because it's kind of funny. Still going, still going, it's still going. Like, why is this necessary? Please tell me why. Even though this may be paper, you're really better off just asking for that e-receipt and bringing your own bag. The less random objects floating around in the world, the better. Yay, tip number one, done, moving on. To tip number two. Maybe you don't live in LA, but I could literally star my entire family with the clothes I find lying on the street. I have a saying, don't be an ass, share your sass. I really don't have a saying. Yeah. But my point is, I probably want your clothes. He probably wants your clothes. She probably wants your clothes. I know my dog definitely wants your clothes because she loves just like eating it and having it in her mouth. The point is, give to charity, give it to other people, give it to friends some family, some people that are like younger than you who might want your clothes share. Off the top of my head, I could probably think of Crossroads, Trading Co, Buffalo Exchange, The Real Real. And these are companies that will actually pay you to, to give up your clothes. And other places that will also really appreciate it. I like charities such as Salvation Army, Goodwill, just off the top of my head. I'll leave a link down below of all the places that you guys can give up your clothes. But this is such an important option down below. Just so you guys feel guilty when you don't do it because I've given you all the resources. You're welcome. Tip number three, reuse your own clothes. This one is kind of more like a hack for yourself. I had this guy once who actually wanted to date my crazy ass and we went on a date and I was wearing this really ugly pink sweater with a bunch of like little flowers on it and he touched my shoulder. That was it. I actually wanted to burn the m but the point is I cut the Grab the tiny little pieces and use it to clean my dog's feet and mop the floor. 
You can be angry and eco-friendly too. Other things you can do with like crappy, maybe too nasty to give to charity clothing is you can cut it up into like tiny little pieces and use it for like bench wipes instead of reusing paper towels all the time or you know mopping your floor or cleaning your dog's feet. If it's nice fabric, you can use it for like head scarves, like scrunchies, hair accessories. I know out of like one t-shirt, you probably have like maybe 10 scrunchies or five scrunchies. So be nice and give it to your friend. Um, other things you can do as well is you can make like bags out of this fabric. Hey, so you can use it to go shopping. See, you get how this works. You can also make quilts out of squares of t-shirts or anything like that. Or you can just literally thrift these boring outfits that you no longer wear and make it cute again so you can wear it. What? Tip number four. <laughs> there are companies out there that actually make clothes out of recycled materials and are earth friendly and it's cute. This is a really really good deed. Now what we can do is we can buy their clothes and support these companies and help give them the success that they need to keep making the world a better place. It's almost too easy and we pretty much don't have to do anything different but look at different URLs and different stores and keep buying clothes and wearing cute clothes. Really excited about this one. I'm not gonna lie. They're pretty much doing all the work for us. Here are a bunch of stores that are gonna be your best friends on the world is on fire. And tip number five. <sighs> this one's a really easy one. Too easy, too nice, and too perfect. You can save money by recycling clothes yourself. Yay! So pretty much buying thrifted clothes, secondhand clothes, clothes that people have used before or don't want anymore. Is a good way to recycle yourself. As said before, link down below is a list of places that you guys can thrift. If I'm being honest, there are so many benefits to thrifting and it's not just something poor people do. It's what smart, lovely, artistic, considerate people do. Not to mention, it's cheaper, so why wouldn't you do that? Gorgeous unwanted clothes for cheaper. All clothes are one of a kind. They will never be made again. You literally own something that most people want and don't own or are thrown away. You're winning. As well, fashion trends always rotate. So you buy a Gucci skirt now that's off trend and off season. And then in a year's time, fashion rotates and you're back to it again for the cheap price of $30. Bam, bam. One winner. So tip number six is pretty much the opposite of what I just explained, but it's a really, really important one. So not supporting and buying clothes from fast fashion companies that mass produce clothes um, in exchange for quality, human labor, and quite frankly, the entire earth. So explain this in a way that kind of makes sense. Companies like H&M, Forever 21, and Australia Supre. I'll link down below an article and give you guys like a list so you can kind of get the gist of what sort of stores you should avoid and what it is about these stores. So these companies literally fast produce clothes for like a very, very cheap price that will go out of fashion really, really quickly and will pretty much just be discarded and they don't really care. Their fabrics are crap and they're literally filled with so much plastic and waste that it will literally just start to like the quality is not there is what i'm pretty much trying to say so it'll be unwearable within a year if you overwear it the fact is they pretty much make more clothes than people can actually physically wear and all for the benefit of corporate money billion dollar businesses tip number seven pretty much going off what i was saying before buying quality over quantity there's a really popular thing going around called a capsule wardrobe which is very popular for like minimalists but what it's pretty much about is just having your staple bunch of outfits that you can wear like multiple different ways. And um, the benefit of this is investing money in a really good pair of jeans, say that you wear very often, or like a good jacket that's not just going to break apart after a year if you wear it every day and end up in the bin eventually. Like buying quality that will last forever so you don't have to keep spending all that money. That kind of concept. As someone who adores fashion, Good quality is the heart of what good fashion is all about. Why someone will spend, you know, thousands of dollars on a Louis Vuitton bag that has, you know, been carefully stitched with craftsmanship and skill and mastery that will literally last forever if taken care of versus, you know, the Zara handbags that you wear a lot for like maybe a couple of months and they end up deteriorating and ending up in the trash anyway. Yeah, it's a very quick, easy solution, but in the long term, it doesn't do anything for the environment or technically for you. Hmm. 
So quality over quantity. An appreciation for the skill, the hard work and the art that goes into creating these beautiful pieces of fashion. Tip number eight. Sorry, I really needed a drink. Buy specific materials that, that are eco-friendly and not harmful to the environment that don't include a lot of plastic. A way you can normally tell by going into a store if it's like a fast fashion business, whatever, is um, looking inside and looking at the little tags that will always tell you what materials are being used and straying away from anything plastic. This includes nylon, acrylic, polyamide, polyester, just to name a few. And a no-brainer. Fox, fox leather, fox fur, it's just a no-go. And if you're really good, you know, you'll start you'll be able to feel the fabric and be like, hmm, this is crap. This is not quality. Which also makes it hard because if you are vegan, you don't really want to be buying animal products, even though they are quality and they last a very long time. You want to kind of be supporting companies that stray from animal killing so it's really up to you and your decision the other side of the coin as well is you know if you are thrifting and you want to reuse the the leather the cow pretty much and not waste what's already been made and somebody else has already used and bought um as well so it really just depends on how you see it and what you feel is right because you don't want to be wasting an animal that's already given up their life for you sadly oh it's a hard topic I was also speaking to one of my vegan environmentalist boom boom friends and she said that an easy way as well to, to buy in clothes if you're concerned about you know all of these things is just stick into brands that you trust that are locally made and that you can like you know get real information out of them instead of being sure where this came from, who made it, if it was human labor or if it was you know people that actually just love sewing and the art and the craftsmanship of it. So that is another option. Shout out to Tamara Thorson. Ha, Tamara Thorson. She is very environmentally friendly. Check her out on Instagram. A list of fabrics that you do kind of want to support and want to buy more of is cotton, linen, um, vegan silk, which is soy, apparently, rayon, and this is hard to remember these fabrics. They're also complicatedly named and I'm not good at pronunciation. Lyocell this word. Also non-vegan fabrics, unfortunately, up to you, which is silk, cashmere, and wool. Tip number nine. Why do I do this? <laughs> Tip number nine is, on a brighter note, something you'll all like. Learn to optimize your wardrobe and wear clothes a bunch of different ways. And understand the vast possibilities of all your outfits to curb the temptation of going out and buying new clothes just because you're bored. You've all done it. This can be done with a bunch of bold colors and just like having fun with chucking a bunch of weird stuff all together and being like outrageous. Or this can also be done while just having a very neutral closet so that you can match everything with anything because they're all neutral colors. This is literally up to you. I have a video up here on how to style outfits for 2020 if y'all interested in how to do that. Boom boom check. Tip number 10, we're getting there. This one, people forget an actual lot. I know my younger 17 year old sister makes a habit of wearing an outfit for maybe like 10 minutes and sweating in it just a little bit and just chucking it to the washing machine, pressing go and being like, yeah, what of it? Are you kidding me? One small dress in a washing machine, going around and around in the washing machine. <laughs> Duh. Um, every single night and then going into the dryer every single night chewing up electricity water point is wash your clothes all at once not scattered put a big load into the washing machine because the water amount's going to be the same anyway so just chuck it all in at once save energy don't be a bitch and wear three outfits in one day i've done it don't do it and only wash your clothes Thanks, Ginger. My dog just jumped off my bed and threw everything onto the floor. Wash your clothes when it actually needs to be washed and all at once. If that means wearing different outfits every day of the week to save yourself from wearing the same dress every single day of the week and washing it every night, then that is fine. In fact, that's more than fine. That is fantastic. That is brilliant. That is... Tip two for laundry. 
Who knew there were so many things to laundry? Use cold water or some washing machines like mine have an eco cold option, which is so freaking nice. Use that option instead of wasting more energy trying to heat up the water when it's really pointless. Your clothes do not really freaking care. Another one is instead of chewing up more energy, shrinking your clothes and wearing them out, hang your clothes out in the natural source of energy that is outside. It is called drying your clothes in the sun. What? You save a lot of energy and I swear to not God, just the earth's well be it. Your clothes will die three times, I am being definite here, an exact three times more quickly if you put it inside the dryer. It shrinks your clothes as well, it wears them out, if you hang them up outside it will keep it straight, natural source, and it will not even take that long. And the weird thing is, in Australia, everybody hangs up their laundry, they don't have dryers. Only when coming to the US, everyone's just too lazy, so not bag in the US, but I just want you to know that that is an option that is applauded and will save your clothes and keep them going in the long run. I am giving you guys one more, no. a what? Tip number 11? What? You're so kind. Tip number 11. This one is the golden star one. If you get this one, you are as lovely as Audrey Hepburn. Some places are already Audrey Hepburn and they are eco-friendly. This might be a little bit harder depending on where you live, but I know in Vancouver, definitely, they have a bottle-free store. I don't know what it's called. What is it called? I'll link everything down below. There are stores that sell detergent, soaps, toothpaste, you name it, but without the really big, ugly plastic containers to fill them up in. Containers filled with plastic wrappers. I will link everything down below, a couple of options that might be near you guys because it's such a great option to save waste. And these stores literally have all the products you need, but you just go in there with like a glass bottle, a glass cup, glass jar, recycled, what? And you literally just fill up detergent and put it in. I know this is a bit extra and it's a bit more difficult, obviously, but if you guys are really into the whole eco-friendly concept of 2020, then that is an amazing option for you. Otherwise, you can also be Audrey Hepburn if you pay that extra money and buy bigger ones instead of smaller ones with like less filled up, like going to Costco's or what more, and buying the ones that are in cardboard boxes. There are so many out there that are big plastic containers and sometimes they'll even have the plastic wrapped detergent. We did it! We did it. That is 10 plus one extra tip for you guys to achieve your 2020 goals of being more eco-friendly, just in fashion. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Everything is here. I make lots of fashion videos, so feel free to look at these. Most of them are thrifted. They're all cheap, very on a budget, outfits, ideas, you name it. Have a lovely week and I'll see you, not see you next Friday. I keep making that mistake. I just sound creepy, why?